Hello and welcome to Die Dice Tabletop. Now this is going to be a big episode. First of all, out with the old, in with the new, I got a new cutting mat. Guaranteed this won't stay clean for long. Alright, first thing that we need to do is the other foot. I'm not going to do anything special with this, I just want it laying flat on the ground. So I'm going to put it together just like this. I realised after filming the last video that I'd need to put the ground texture on first, otherwise I wouldn't be able to get access to it fully all on the base, um, so I did that after filming. I used Vallejo ground texture. This is just going to be for like a first layer. We're still going to blend the feet in and probably build up a couple more like muddy effects the later we get on uh, and closer we get to painting as well. Now it's time to plan how the wire is going to run up through the leg and into the body. I already did some test fitting off camera to try and get a rough angle of where the wire is going to go into the sort of ankle joint. The bottom of the hip as you can see there is hollow so it'll be no problem to run the wire once I get it out of the knee. So this looks like a good angle. We're going to go for about there. So we're going to start off using a narrow pointy rotary bit. This is because I want control over how big I'm making the hole. There's a couple of different gauge wires that I'm going to be using throughout this. Um, so I only want to make sure that there's enough room for the size wire that I'm using to go through. I don't want to create any structural weaknesses at any point. So this is just a matter of taking my time and making sure I don't blow through too much plastic at once. Hole complete, the wires now fit nicely into the ankle. Next that needed to be done was to figure out the angle in which to drill the hole for the wire to come out of the top. So it was a matter of just placing the hip on, that's looking like a good angle there, so I've just marked it with my thumb. And we'll come at it from about there I think. Hole made, time to find out whether or not this lines up. I don't think you should have much an issue, there's a nice big hole there at the bottom of the hip. Yeah, that'll do well. Next I'm going to need to make a hole in the ball of the hip joint for the wire to come out and go into the uh, hip and up into the torso. I've been sort of rubbing around the hip joint on there, so you can see I've already got a little mark um, around where the hip is going to go and then there's that negative bit in the centre where the plastic isn't touching, so that's how I know where to drill the hole into the centre there. I was having a lot of trouble trying to figure out how I was going to pull the wire through the actual shin joint itself. So I got a brass tube and stuck it down the top hole and it lined up perfectly with one of the drainage holes that I'd made for the print. So what I think I'm going to do is attack it on the other side and make a hole into the back of the ankle joint. I'll then feed the wire up that drainage hole through the front um, and that's going to make it just so much easier instead of trying to feed the wires up and figure out and push them through and find out where they are on the inside <laughs> to try and maybe tweeze them out. Time now to test it out, and this ended up working so much better than I even thought it would. The wire fits perfectly in there. So I'll be able to stick it into the brass tube and then just pull it straight out the top. So next we're going to need to connect a longer piece of wire to run it up through the body. I got some of the shrink tube and cut it up that I had used previously. So now it was just a matter of getting a length out and trying to figure out just how long it would need to go to be all the way through the leg and up into the torso itself. And that looks about good, so I cut it there. Next thing to do was to prepare the wire by splitting it and then just cutting the ends of it off with a razor to expose the wire. With that done, the next thing to do is solder these on. So even though I'm colourblind, even I can match up red to red and black to black. So this was just a simple matter of getting these connected. My soldering skills still have not improved since the last video. I then push the heat shrink tubing over the solder joint and heat that up with a lighter. That'll help give the solder a lot more strength. With one wire down, it was now a matter of just repeating the exact same process on the negative. Now that those wires are connected, the next thing we need to do is feed them through the ankle joint. 
So I quickly lined up using the wire where I needed to cut my hole. Fed the wire through. That's a bit of a snug fit, but it works. Pulled it all the way through. And that sits in perfectly. When I was pulling the wires through the leg, I did have to use a little bit of force on them. So before I went any further, I thought it was a good thing to do is just to make sure that it all still works, that I haven't pulled anything apart because <laughs> once it's in the leg, there's no way I'm gonna be able to fix it. And thankfully, it's not broken. And now it was time to test my genius plan of running the brass rod down through the leg, out of the bottom as you can see there, the next thing to do is to push the wire inside the brass rod itself. It's a good strong fit in there, so the hope is I can pull the rod with the wire and it all comes through. So I just repeated that with the other wire as well. This one was a little bit more difficult to get through because I had the resistance of the other wire being in there as well. But this one worked as well. Success. I pulled the wires through, got them all nice and tight, placed the ankle shin part in his little footy base, and look at that. We're getting somewhere. Another quick test, and it still works. Next, I need to feed the wire up through the hip. I'm gonna use the exact same method that I used for the shin. Why not? It worked. So I got a separate piece of wire, bent that slightly, pushed it through the top hole of the hip, out of the bottom, sellotaped, well, masking taped the wire to the wire, and pulled. These holes are bigger than the one that was in the shin, so it was much easier to get the two wires through this time. And with that, they were both through, so it was just a matter of pulling up all the slack and get a glimpse of what this leg is going to look like. Now that we've finished running the wire up the leg, the next thing is to secure the foot in place. This is just a simple matter of sloshing super glue absolutely everywhere, giving it a good firm hard press down, and that is not going anywhere. What we'll also do is mold this into the base with a little bit more Vallejo ground texture later on. So I did a lot of fiddling about off camera with the angle that I wanted to get the leg at. Um, so this was just a matter of gluing it up and getting it as close to that as I can. Thigh all glued in place. The next thing we need to do now is to move on to figure out the angle in which this is gonna stand at. And to do that, we now need to build the waist. The waist is made up of three parts. This will be really quick to put together, but first we're gonna to need to make a hole in the side of where the hip goes in and then at the top for the wires to run through. This ended up taking a lot longer than planned. As I started drilling a hole in the top, I could see all the supports that were left behind on the inside. So all of those had to come out. You can see the mess that it made in there. But now that is free, that is hollow on the inside, and we aren't gonna get any wires obstructed. With those holes made, we can now glue the hip joints in place. This is really simple, line of glue around each one and just line them up to make sure that they were looking all vertical. Time now just to test and run the wires through. They go through with ease, and we can start to get an idea now as to how the legs are gonna to come together. The other leg goes together nice and simple. This is just gonna be in a neutral standing pose as a balance. I spent a while trying to figure out how I was going to fit all these pieces together. They move around so much as you can see, but once I got them in a position I liked, I grabbed the airbrush and I used that to mark where the hip joint and the leg sort of went together in a position that I was happy with. This means that I can take the piece away from the leg, put glue on either side, and then just match the marks back up and it will glue exactly in the position that I just want it in. A good firm press to hold that glue in place. And now I know that's gone back in the exact same position that I needed it in. On to now gluing the leg to the foot and you wanna make sure that you have your head in the shot whenever you do something like this. So I just put a dab of glue around the base where the foot connects onto uh, and then balanced it against the other leg. This is just to create a sort of tack hold to start off with. 
Once that held, I then came back around and put more super glue in around the base just to strengthen it. So the box of rubber gloves I used for 3D printing fitted perfectly in the center of the waist. This enabled me then to move the other leg and I was able to glue that into position. So I put a dab of glue at the bottom as well as around the ring on the hip joint. Simply balancing this in place was enough to get it to stay where I needed it to be. Uh, and then once I was happy with the position, I went around at the base of the foot and put a little bit more super glue in just to strengthen it at the bottom. Once the glue was set, I couldn't resist but to try a couple of armor panels on. Now we're on to building the torso. Start off with the base of this is in two parts, but I need to get a hole through the center of it to run the wiring through. Easiest way I think to do this is if I just sellotape these two pieces, and what I'll do is I'll cut one channel out of the two, and then when I take this apart and put them together, they should hopefully line up and then just make one big hole to go right the way through. Moment of truth time, I glued either side, firmly pushed them together, and I had to hold these for a good long time just to make sure that bond was really, really strong. And we can see that worked out well. All I need to do now is just enlarge this hole. And that'll make our lives a lot easier a little bit later on when it comes to wiring through into the torso. Next to do was to glue in these side pieces. These are gonna really help strengthen the bond between the two halves because they cover sort of the two sections each. So with a bit of super glue and a firm hold, that was done. The next thing that we needed to do now was just put the sides front and back on. This is gonna really be a test to see how much the prep work sort of paid off in advance. These things went together really, really well, actually. There was some very minor sort of just adjustments that I needed to make on a couple of the parts just to make sure they really fitted snugly together. Um, but other than that, this was pretty much first time, big success. The only thing I'll need to do now is cover up those drainage holes that I mistakenly put on the front. And there we are, the torso is together. We can now see how this is going to look on top of the legs. The hole for the wire is perfect. This will now have enough room to run out to the front and connect the LEDs that are gonna go into the eyes of the Titan Warlord's head. It has full maneuverability. And it is a beast. We're not gonna be stopping there though. We're gonna carry on now and start building the reactors. These sit either side of the torso Three easy pieces. The prep work that I did on these earlier meant that I could just put a line of glue all around all the joints, firmly hold them together, and they held firm very quickly. That's one complete. Repeated the exact same process for the one on the other side. There we have it, in a few minutes, both reactors are together. They are huge as well. Now that they were built, it was time to figure out how they connected onto the torso itself. There's a little part at the back here that slots into a recess, which acts as a really good guide. But you can see due to the tolerances that I printed at, some plastic will need to be removed in order to make these fit snugly. This was a really simple job, didn't take much work on either side. And that's one side fitting nice. On to the other side, this had a little bit more plastic that needed to be removed compared to the other one. But it didn't take too long to do. The rotary sander made quick work of this. Here we have both reactors now on the torso. They're not glued on just yet. I'm still gonna need access to get inside to do all the wiring. But this thing is ridiculously big. I just can't get over it. Every time that just you do something new, it just <laughs> exponentially gets bigger and bigger. So with that complete, I thought it would be rude not just to uh, have a little look at see how it all is going so far. The wire was a little fiddly to push up into the center of the torso. This is why I haven't connected the reactors on just yet. I've still got a lot of work that I need to do now on the inside. 
but from here on, there is not much left to build of the actual body itself. Thank you all so much for watching. Next time we're going to be getting on and wiring up the lights, I think. So leave a like, comment and subscribe. Thank you ever so much, and I'll see you again soon. Goodbye. <laughs>